Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome to the Port Leash Classic Car Show. We've got a guy in a Mark 1 Volkswagen Golf here. How are things? What year is the Golf? 80. 1980. Yes. It's 1980, not much older than myself. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, so we're in the upper level car park. The show is underneath us. So we're just gonna watch a few more cars pulling in here. I have Kenneth as well. He's waiting for his Jaguars, <laughs> so we'll see what they're like. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a great show. I like this rule, guys. Look, all cars must be over 30 years old and cannot be removed from the show until 4 p.m. Because an awful lot of these shows, people start leaving early. But I like that rule. Yes, we'll have that. So let's check it out, guys. The Port Leash Classic Car Show for 2019. Let's have a quick chat with this man because last year he won Best Car of Show. So he's bringing it again for anyone that missed it last year. <laughs> huh? Let's have a chat with this man here. How's it going? Didn't you win last year? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, this car won best of show last year. So he just came this year just in case anyone missed it. Missed it, Yeah. And what year is it again? 1973. 73. BMW 2002. Very good. Let's have a look at this. Very nice, isn't it? Wow. Always great to see these old cars being looked after. And this guy is after coming. It must be raining outside. It's all wet, the car. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're, we're in total dryness down here. Now the show is down below. We're just in the upper level car park. Okay. In the, uh, the old Ford Fiesta. Okay, let's go down below now and see what this show is all about. So we've just made our way down to the car park here. So there's still hundreds of more cars to fill this car park. So we've got a bunch of Fiestas, Toyota Corollas over there. And Kenneth is very happy because he's after coming across Tala Powder Coatings. Now they restore all these old parts. So some parts that you would see here would normally end up in a bin. But look at this. Kenneth is very happy because what is this, Kenneth? What is this? This is a Jaguar engine. It's a Jaguar engine. That's right, yes, that's right, yes. <laughs> now, this has been actually, this was power hosed, the whole lot, she was, Clem yes, the whole lot was done and she was painted and they're using them as tables, by us. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then the clocks. Look, we got all the pistons here. The piston clocks yeah. that you can't pay at night. Now, you can get they're these online, talipowdercoatings.ie. And they're and 55 euro today. Yeah, 55 here, but they're normally they're 65. 65 on yeah. my night, lads, so. Yeah, so sometimes it pays to come to the shows. And they also powder coat all these bike frames. And you see over here, we have got the crankshafts here as well. I don't know what they're off. So I'd say they're out of some sort of a Jaguar. Probably off a Jaguar, who knows? That's right. So Kenneth, come on, we need to look at some more cars here. Let's go have a <laughs> look at some more cars. Classic Ford Capri there, the 1600 GT. Uh, let's swing over here, we've got two cars here from 1989. The Citroen BX, 16 valve on the left, and the Volvo 340 GL. I remember my English teacher used to drive one of these back in the 80s. Her one was the horrible blue color. Uh, some of you Volvo enthusiasts will know the color I'm on about. Yeah, I didn't like that color at all, but Let's just have a look around these two cars. I like the Citroen, the way it says on the back. ABS, look. Have a look. Like it was a big deal back in the 80s. But uh, it sits really low to the ground, doesn't it? The BX and the Volvo 340 GL. Cage, all the gear, just waiting for the engine to warm up. 
But uh, yeah, he was telling me <laughs> it's got a dog box in it. So like no synchros. You gotta dog it into gear. But uh, yeah, that's quite nice to see now. 206 Group A rally car. Okay, I'm on the Fiat Ireland Owners Club stand. We've got a 127 here from 1979, looking great. And he has the uh, original Irish plate on it also. Then we move over to this. It's a 1974 128 Special. This is the 1100 in a sort of pale green there. And sort of mint green, but it looks very, very well. Then we have another 128 Special. This is the 1300. And this is from 1975. Then from 1973, we've got the 132 Special. So uh, yeah, just the bigger saloon version of the 128. And then we have two X19 Fiat's. These have the five-speed gearbox. But uh, yeah, designed by Bertone. Then we have this Honda Civic. I'm not sure what year this is. It could be early 90s, but it's in absolute mint condition. I saw under the bonnet earlier on. But uh, yeah, I really like that. And there's even a Daihatsu Charade here from 1987. So all the cars here have to be over 30 years of age, but uh, that's very clean. And the X19 there. But uh, let's just swing over here. We've got the uh, Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow. It's from 1979. And then we have this uh, Morris Minor, the traveler there with all the wood around it. And then the Volkswagen Golf, the Cabriolet from 1986. But, yeah. I mean, you see all sorts down here. So what do you think? Should I put a bid in for this car? This is a Singer Vogue Mark II from 1963. And uh, it's for sale for 3,350 euro. So yeah, it is quite clean on the interior. It's in very good condition in there, actually. Yeah, the paintwork is blistered here and there, but what do you expect? Um, yeah, not too bad for the money, is it? Maybe I should put a bid in for 2750 and see what he says. But look, cheap tax, 56 euro the tax, and you don't need to get it NCT'd. Uh, so yeah, maybe I should uh, give him an offer and see what he says. Okay, we've got a bunch of Fords here. Mark 1, Ford Escorts, Mark 2s. Uh, just like this one, this is an original Irish Mexico from 1978. Very clean car, and we have the original Irish number plate. Where, what county is that again? Tipperary, Tipperary registration there. And then we have this TE71 Toyota Corolla Coupe. Again, you don't see many of these on Irish roads, but uh, this is from 1981. So that's quite nice. Then we have the Mark 1 Ford Escort. This is from 1972. And he's got the two liter Pinto engine. Just look at the condition of this. This has only just recently been finished. But uh, looks very nice, doesn't it? Those flared arches, real rally look to it. And then we have another Mark 1 Escort there as well, another Mexico. Let me just run down quickly here. Another Mark 2. And I just want to show you this Mexico down here because this was uh, registered in Limerick. Brand new car. This was bought in Shields of Limerick back in 1974 brand new as you see it here just all painted up in the original color with those decals and all it came from shields look at the condition of this man it's just fantastic I really like that yeah and you can see there as well it has a county clare registration ie and then we've got the capris lineup of them as well look at this one it's got the flared arches on it really nice color on that look at the arches there look you compare that arch to this one <laughs> yeah always nice to see the capris now these vinyl roofs they were yeah they were kind of a trend back in their day but uh, not very good for rust because all dampness underneath and all the roofs on these were all just rust but they were a trend back in the day uh, we even have the old Opel Corsa. Not sure what year that is, XIC. But yeah, 
just thought I'd show you that original Mexico, registered in Limerick in 1974. Okay guys, you're not going to believe who I'm just after meeting. For the first time, I finally get to meet Rosemary Smith, the famous rally driver. Rosemary, finally I get to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> so Rosemary, a lot of people will love to hear that story of that race you done in reverse. Oh, no, 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 no. It wasn't a race, no. It was on a long-distance rally. A long-distance rally. Wait it, to hear this. It was going from London to Sydney in Australia. <laughs> and unfortunately, the man who was doing the engines, and this is a Ford's works car, he uh, did them too high part because, you know, it would be more like a racing engine. Now, when you're going on a long distance event like that, you want an engine that will chug along the whole way and get you there. <laughs> we don't need one that's going to be, you know, just lovely for a bit. And then, yeah. But my one, the pistons went on it anyway. And uh, I was in Kabul with uh, just two pistons. And they said they'd blank them off and, and away we go the next day and we were going up over the Kyber Pass and uh, anyway again the next morning we started off and we only got into Kabul at uh, 3 a.m. and we had to start off again at 7 a.m. so it was all a bit exhausting and uh, we started up but it wouldn't go it just I mean it went up about half a mile then I, you know I would just first down to the start turned it around and, and put it into reverse and uh, started up the Kyber Pass in reverse and it was a long way, it was 33 miles approximately which is up 50 odd kilometres. Yeah, oh. uh, guys hang on a minute now, just get your head around that, 33 miles in reverse. Up a road which was very similar yeah. to uh, Tim Healy Pass or yeah. you know the Malls Gap or some yeah. of these things. Twists and, and bends. Yeah, and, oh, absolutely. And, and you yeah. know, drops on one side and all this sort of carry what, what way was your neck after? Dreadful. <laughs> I still have a crick in it. <laughs> all these years later. Uh, no, it, it wasn't great at the end of it. But you see, we could have given up. But I have never, ever given up on a rally unless I could put over the edge of a cliff or something. Yes, but yes. we had come that far and I just wasn't going to give up. I just wasn't. So I just had to. Now, the girl, my co driver, she would have given up. But uh, no, I don't. I, I'm not a giver yeah. upper. So that's why I'm still around all wow. these years later. I, and Rosemary, what can you tell us about the car we're sitting in here now, the Imp? Oh, well, this is my own little Hillman Imp. It was a works car, a Roots works car. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, 1965. And uh, similar to all the other works cars, it only had a 998cc engine. Mm. And it was basically too slow. It was very hard to keep up at that time with the minis. And, yeah. You know, when the minis went from sort of say whatever it was then they went up to 1275 and you know we were still on our 998 yeah. but anyway so mm. that was and uh, it, it was just downhill now you could pass anything you could literally mm. pass Porsches and everything else and then the minute you started uphill then you know, All right, okay. they just went doom 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 <laughs> they all passed you again but anyway it was good fun but, but Rosemary like you raced like numerous different makes of cars like Porsche Ford, the Imp. Well, I got my first yeah. drive was with the Roots Group, and that was in Rapier. And then I got an Alpine, and then I got uh, the Imp. And then latterly, I got the Sunbeam Tiger, which was the only one that really had a lot of oomph in it, a 4.7 litre engine. One that I still drive, and I drove here last May, I think it was, in the Gordon Bennett. Oh, the Gordon Bennett one. Oh, yeah. it was brilliant here last, just last May, June. Yeah. And, um, but then I, after that I drove for Ford, and I raced then because people told me that any fool could be a rally driver, but to be a race driver, that was totally different. All right. So I did it for three years, and just round and round and round and round in circles, which I got so totally bored. I, I just, I couldn't do it. Now I had a very fast little car, I won everything that I wanted to win. But then from there I went back race, uh, to rallying, and I drove escorts. and. 
we won a champion we won the championship actually three times uh, and it was brilliant I had a, a wonderful co-driver Pauline Gullick who is still she still comes with me on some of the classic events and uh, no it's just been great it's been great but I drove Lancia I drove yeah. Porsche uh, I drove of course uh, London uh, Mexico which is 17,000 miles Seven, 17,000 miles um, <laughs> <laughs> How many days did that take? Oh, God. I can't remember, but <laughs> it was a long time. Wow, that's uh, a long run. Yeah, it was. It was 5,000 miles around Europe first, and then we crossed over to Rio, and then we went south down South America, and then right across Argentina, and up the other side, and then up the Panama Canal, and then up into Mexico City. So, no, we got there. We won the ladies. We were, I think, 10th yeah. overall. And, you know, it was... But we always... I went out to win, uh, yeah. but initially they would say things like, but it's only a sport. And I say, no, it's not only a sport. This yeah. is, I, I'm going out to win. Now, if you said to any of the boys who really take it seriously nowadays, Ash, it's only a sport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know they tell, now mind you, they're on a few hundred thousand a year or whatever. <laughs> yeah. We certainly went. We got expenses and we got, you know, yeah. a few things like that. But, but yeah. Rosemary, you have to tell them the, the story about the Renault Sport Formula One car that you got to drive. <laughs> now, Rosemary is the oldest, not just the oldest woman, but the oldest person ever to have a drive in an actual Formula One car. So that Formula One car actually did race. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, it's yes. a proper... Yes. A proper Formula yeah. 800 brake horsepower, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what happened was that I'm an ambassador for Renault Ireland mm. and, uh, you know, I do quite a few things for them. And I was at a dinner and I'm sitting beside a very nice little man. He was from, he was one of the directors from Renault, France. Mm. And uh, anyway, he we was sitting chatting and he said, what do you do? And I was saying, I used to rally and race and one thing and another. Mm. And, uh, um, that's just some people waving and so, so yeah, sorry, yeah. I get a bit distracted. Now. There's a lot yeah. of people around yeah. to meet Rosemary because yeah. uh, she's signing her book. Yeah. Yes. And uh, anyway, so it was about three weeks or so after that, the head man from Renault Island, Paddy McGee, he came along and he said, uh, would you like to drive a Formula One car? So I said, yes, of course I would. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> never really think it was going to happen. Yeah, but then yeah. I started getting, hello, started getting, um, you know, what were my measurements and how tall was I and so on and so on and so on. And I thought, you know, I think this is for real. <laughs> and then it all transpired, yes, and it was going to be in Paul Ricard in France. So then everything sort of fell into place then. And uh, we flew out. Jude, my friend who's here today also, yeah. she uh, came with me. And everything was lovely. <laughs> yeah. And we stayed in the most magnificent hotel up at the Grand Prix circuit and so on. Then we went up to the circuit itself and so on and so on and so on. And then I was fitted for the suit and for the helmet and for the boots and <laughs> for this, that and the other. Mm. And it sort of sort of kick in with me that it was uh, <laughs> that it was all happening. This is for real. <laughs> and uh, so that was fine. And then uh, I went out and I went out in a First of all, they put me in a Clio, a racing Clio. Oh yeah, and, sighting uh, lap, was yeah, it? Just yeah. going out to see the, the track yeah. and one thing oh, and yeah. another. And then I went out in another, a, a Formula uh, Renault or something, I don't, I don't know. it, But it was a single seater and it had uh, 400 brake horsepower or something. Yeah. No problem at all. And then the, the man, the director of the course in Paul Ricard, he said, I am going to go out in front of you and if I don't think you can do it, you're not doing it. You're not going out in the Formula One. Yeah. So anyway, that was that. And uh, so everything was grand. We did a few laps. We came in. Hello. <laughs> we came in and uh, he said, you're fine. On your way. Yeah. So then then I started getting really nervous and I thought, oh, <laughs> yeah. what am I doing? And luckily June was with me mm. and uh, June was saying, I'll be all right, don't worry, once you get going, you'll be fine, you'll yeah. be fine. So that was that and then uh, went out the next morning into the car and, you know, you've got the neck brace on and you've got the helmet and the things plugged in your ears yeah. and 
and I, I wasn't sure, you know, it had the, the paddles behind the steering wheel, which I'd never driven before. <laughs> yes. And the steering wheel isn't a steering wheel, it's sort of yeah. like that. And I was looking for the top of the steering wheel, which <laughs> didn't exist. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so it was sort of very interesting, I'd say the least. Was so, and the last thing before I went out, they said um, Jeremy Clarkson. Oh, he tried it and he stalled it and stalled it and mm. stalled it and stalled it. And then uh, after that, I thought, no, I don't like Jeremy Clarkson anyway. <laughs> yeah. I don't, don't know. I like him now. Doing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? No, I, I must, and I tell him if I meet him again. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's not really concerned about what I think anyway. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and the other mechanic came over and he said, you see that red button down there? And I said, I can't see anything. I, I, you know, and yeah. I put my hand Oh, yeah, the neck. Yeah, yeah, and he said, you know, don't touch that. And I said, what, <laughs> what is it? He said, well, if you crash and it bursts into flames, then pull that red button. <laughs> now, that wasn't the most uh, yeah. encouraging thing to start off my drive with. Yeah. And... Uh, so anyway that was that and wow. i got going and i didn't stall it and what i was so pleased about was when i came in after the laps i was doing and all the mechanics had come out and all the people and they were all standing there clapping and cheering that i had actually got it going without stalling yeah. and without making a total idiot and without crashing yeah so i was really quite pleased with the whole thing and and, and how how did it feel driving it. It felt a little bit like a large go-kart. Right, okay. <laughs> I mean, I started my life in a go-kart. Yes. That's, you know, really mm. what I, I started. But anyway, so that was that, and wow. this was, uh, yeah. In oh, yeah, and, and Rosemary, uh, the funny thing about it as well, that all her suit, the helmet, the car, had oh, yes. RS on it. Which, and, and I said to the PR man, <laughs> That is so good of him. Even the tires have RS on it. Yeah. Rosemary Smith. Oh, Her initials. Is <laughs> and this PR man looked at me yeah. hatingly, is all I can say. <laughs> and he said, uh, what about Renault Sport? Yeah. <laughs> so oh. That's the coincidence. <laughs> Rosemary Smith, her initials, and then Renault Sport all over the car. You couldn't write it like. <laughs> it was just a bit of a coincidence. Yeah. But yeah. Rosemary, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Very nice to meet you. Finally, very welcome. finally, You're after welcome. all these years. You're there you have it, guys. Check out her book. She's signing it today, Rosemary Smith. Lovely, yes, indeed. <laughs> it's called Driven. Driven. There you go, guys. Thanks, Rosemary. Okay. Cheers. Bye bye. <laughs>
E30. Uh, if you if you ever see one of these in right hand drive, uh, my advice would be to <laughs> look for half price on it because as you all know, you have to buy these in left hand drive. That is way. Uh, that's the way they were intended to be built. But uh, yeah, a Minter there from 1988. So these have about 220 horsepower. But uh, well looked after example there as well. Let me show you around this car. Now this is quite special because it's the only one in existence. It's called a Silver Stream. And this is from 1909, built by a man called Philip Somerville Large. So it cost him 368 pounds to build this back in 1909. Now, his whole plan was to build more of these, but when they'd done all the sums and added in all their profits that they needed to make, it worked out at 800 pounds that each of these cars were going to cost. So the whole project was canned because it wasn't thought to be uh, financially viable. So, um, I mean, 800 pounds back in 1909 you probably buy a house for it but it does have a look of kind of rolls royce to it doesn't it and only about 22 horsepower but uh yeah still quite a nice car okay we've got a very nice ford anglia here from 1960 this only has 26,000 miles on it from new and never been repainted so that is pretty cool and that's where we're going to wrap it up today from the Ballinacale Vintage and Classic Owners Club Show here in Port Leash for 2019. We've got a very nice 1911 Renault there. This used to be a taxi. And oh yeah, Kenneth, you were telling me, you, you, what's that car? You heard some bang off? I heard about the Bugatti. I, I've the never Bugatti. heard of a Bugatti, guys. Well, the Bugatti, she looks like. <laughs> <laughs> she looks that's, like that. That's, that's, a, bu that's a Bugatti. No. 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 Look at in there, lads. Look at that. Look, she's a Bugatti. Oh, Will the you Bugatti. tell him that's a Bugatti? No, oh, she's, yes. Yes. she's it's not. Oh, yes. She's not. She's a Bugatti. Huh? No. It's a Bugatti, Kenneth. No. Not a Bugatti. No, she's a the Bugatti. Bugatti. She gave me a surprise. Never had a bang off. Bugatti. Yes. That's yes. I had a bang off one of the cars. I didn't know what it was. That's the other side that she was the Bugatti. <laughs> it's a Bugatti. We know it's a Bugatti. <laughs> <laughs> this Renault car. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a fierce bang off the Bugatti, wasn't there? Was a, oh, the Bugatti, oh, there, was a <laughs> there was a terrible bang off the Bugatti, alright. I'll tell you something, there was a terrible smell off at the end. Oh, yeah. There was, yeah. You, you,